All right, hey guys, Mr. Kyle Myers Mathematics, and let's just jump right into it. This is a worksheet on center and spread of data for CUDA software infinite algebra one. That's why it's infinite. They're all infinite. They all say infinite. I don't know why. Nobody knows. All right, so test scores number one. We are trying to figure out, and and you know we have all these numbers, and actually they're already in order, so that was pretty nice of them. They didn't have to put them in order, but they did. They won't later on, but they, they do for this one. So that's pretty nice. If they're not in order, sometimes it is helpful to put them in order. Um, what I'm going to do is, so so number one and number two, um, there's a way to do all of these on a calculator. Pretty much everything. Besides the simpler stuff, like range, range is not too bad. You just, you know, subtract the largest from the smallest value and you know interquartile range you know it's kind of similar to range we'll talk about more more of that in a second but you can actually do all of this on a calculator a lot of different calculators uh, you might have to look up a guide on different calculators and things like that but I'm going to show you how to do it on a TI 84 plus which will be similar to an 84 plus CE but I just never got the CE because I put all the programs in the plus and I was like well but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So if you are not able to use a calculator, then uh, I'll do that with number one. W number one has less numbers. Number two has more numbers. And yet they're pretty much the same thing. The numbers are overlapping a little bit even. And number two has more numbers. So it's going to be harder to do that one by hand. So it'll take longer. So let's go ahead and do the first one by hand. And then I'll show you how to do it, number two, on a TI-84+, plus, and then what you can do with that is, you know, it, with your calculator, it might be a little different. It, some of the buttons that I'll be telling you how to press and showing you what to do will be the same on yours. Not all the same. If you're using a TI, it'll be, you know, more similar because TIs are, you know, they have kind of the same functionality a little bit across the board. But if you're using, like, Casio or something, then it might be very, very different. So... Just keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, we'll find the mode first. We'll just kind of go in order here. So the mode. The mode would be the most often. So we look for any repeating values. If there are no repeating values, then there is no mode. And that's, that's basically how that works. So 37, 42, 48, 51, 52, 53, 54, 54, 55. So only one number repeats, and that was the 54. 54. That repeats. So the mode is 54. So, and actually, you know what, let me put this all off to the side, because I'm going to need more space for number two as I explain the calculator stuff, I think. So the mode is 54. Okay, what about the median? Median would be the middle number, right? So median, we would say, okay, one and one, first number, last number, second number, second to last number, third number, third to last number, fourth number, fourth to last number. So there it is. All right, so the median, median is 52. All right, what about the mean? Okay, now let's find the mean. The mean is a little bit harder. That's going to actually require a little bit of math here. And for that one, we would want to add up all the numbers. The mean, a.k.a. the average, so the mean which they also call the average sometimes. So for that one, we're going to want to add up all the numbers. And we can do that right here, I think. 37, 42. If you're doing it by hand, you want to put them vertically. It's going to be a little easier that way, I think. 51, 52, 53, 54, 54 again, and 55. Okay, so how I like to add these, if you're having to do it by hand, is you list them all like this. And then just make groups of 10, basically. So boom, boom, there's 10. And then uh, 7 and 3. That makes 10. And then we have uh, 5, 4, 1. That makes a 10. And then what's left over? Because I think we don't have that much left over. I think the only thing left over is a 2 and a 4. 2 and 4 makes 6. So if you do it that way, 
that's uh, I think that might be the best way to do it. If you have a better way to do these by hand, let me know in the comments. I'm curious. But then we carry that three over from the, the three groups of ten, and then we basically do it again. So we've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I'll go ahead and just put 30 there. And then here, let's see, uh, 3, 6, 10, and then one more 4. We've got a 4 left over. So that makes 44. So 44. There were no three-digit numbers, so we don't need to carry any more. So 446 is the sum. But if you want the average, the average isn't the sum, it's the average. It's the sort of, the, it, it's a middle number, kind of, but so is the median. It's, it's a, w what the fancy term is, the measure of central tendency, if you've heard of that phrase before. And that, that's kind of what the mean is, too. It's like a middle number, but it's a different kind of middle number than the median. It's a lot harder to find out, for one. So, let's, uh, let's see here. So, 446, and we would divide that into 446. And we want to divide that into how many there are. Well, how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. Does that even go in evenly? I don't think it does. But we don't have to make it go in evenly. Five, uh, 9 goes into 44 almost 5 times, but not quite. It goes in 4 times. 36. And then we'd have 8 left over. Okay. And then 86, how many times does that go in? Well, it goes in uh, 9 times. 9 times 9 is 81. So that's got 5 left over. So at this point, you can try to turn it into a fraction, or you could just turn it into uh, or turn it into a decimal, I mean, by keep going, and then you just round it at some point. We could do that, or you could turn it into a fraction. Either way, um, anytime you're dividing by 9, by the way, whatever the remainder is, it's that repeating. Meaning it's, it's 49.5 repeating. So so you could say the mean is 49.5 repeating, or 49 and 5 ninths, or you could turn that into an improper fraction, or you could round it to two decimal places and call it 49.56. A lot of options there. The, uh, the answers on this document, which by the way, if you didn't know, you can Google these documents and you can find the answers. If your teacher gave you a paper worksheet that looks exactly like what I am doing right now, and that's why you're here, then you can Google this, and you can find the answers, which is why a lot of times the teachers will tell you you have to show your work, because they don't want you to just put the answer. Okay, well, if you if you put the answers only, right, if you're just looking at the answers, you can find those later on in the document, and I'll show you those when we get done anyways, but this document will say that the answer is 49.56, so they round it to two decimal places, but it's whatever your teacher asks you to do, right? So, anyways, that's the mean. All right, lower quartile. The mean was the hardest one, besides standard deviation. Standard deviation is really annoying. We'll probably try to squeeze that in up here somewhere. But, uh, so, the lower quartile is going to have to do with the median, actually. And what we want to do is we basically want to take the median of the first half of the data. So it's like it's like the median of the median, kind of, but there's two medians of the median, because there's like the first half and the second half. So if we find the median of the first half, that's called the lower quartile. Quartile, like a quarter, it's one-fourth. So it's, it's like the one-fourth mark. All right. Now, uh, the median was 52, so that's right here. So let's slash it. And then the first half would be right here, 37, 42, 48, and 51. Well, there's kind of like two middles. There's two middles. So since there's two middles, you actually have to take the average of the two middles. So the average of 42 and 48, what you could do is just try to think about what number is exactly between them. You could count if they're close. Or you can actually just take the average, add them up, and then divide by 2. So if you add them up and divide by 2, you'd get 45. Or if you just kind of count, you'd get 45 as well. So that's the lower quartile. Lower quartile. And that's going to be 45. All right. What about the upper quartile? All right, so the upper quartile. Same thing, but in the other direction. So it's actually 54, because if you notice... 
53, 54, 54, 55, those are the 4, and 54 and 54 are right in the middle there, so it's 54. It's the, actually the average of 54 and 54, which is shocker, 54. So, upper quartile, done. Interquartile range. Okay, so the range is the highest value minus the lowest value. The interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So, that that's all that is. So, the upper quartile is 54, the lower quartile is 45, so the interquartile range would be 9. Interquartile range is 9. Okay, population standard deviation. This one is probably the only thing that could possibly be more annoying than the mean, because it's very, very annoying. And actually, you have to find the mean to find standard deviation, so it's a good thing we already found the mean. So what you do is you find the the deviation, so how far from the mean does each value go? How far do our scores deviate, go away from the mean? That's what you're trying to find out. So you do a bunch of math for this, basically. We're going to want to do a bunch of math. We want to do, uh, so we want to, let's start with 37. So we want to take the mean. The mean is 49.5 repeating. So let's let's just say 50 for this one. So the the population standard deviation is going to be uh, a very like exact number. But if you're having to do it by hand, hopefully your teacher's not being a crazy person, and they don't make you use 49.5 repeating or 49 and uh, 5 ninths. So I'm just going to round the mean to 50 for nice numbers here. 50, and then we subtract 37. So we want to figure out how much it deviates. And we're going to do that with all the numbers, basically. 50 and 42. 50 and 48. And then you have 51. So you could do 50 minus 51, but that's going to be a negative number. Not that it really matters, because you're going to square all of these values next. But just to keep things positive, you can do that. 51, 52. Right, you get the picture. 53. 54, 54 again, ah, 54, and 55. All right, so, so many. You can do these uh, by hand, in your head, etc., etc. If you're having to do this without a calculator, this is what you have to do. So hopefully your teacher lets you use a graphic calculator or a scientific calculator that's able to do stat stuff. Okay, so what are all of these? Well, this one would be 13. This one's going to be 8, this one's going to be 2, this one's 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5. Okay, so now what do you do? Okay, well now we actually uh, square them. So we're going to square all of these numbers. I know, crazy. 13 squared is 169. 8 squared is 64. 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. Okay, so we square all of those. Now we're going to add all of those up. So we're going to add all of those up. So actually, I was I was like, oh yeah, 2 will take way much more space. No, it's not going to take much. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, so 169, 64, 4, 1, 4, 9, 16, 16, 25. We want to add all of those up. Fun. All right, so now what we're going to do is the same thing we did earlier. We're going to use groups of 10 again. So 9 and 1 make a 10. All right, what else do we have here? Oh, a 6, 4, and a 6, 4. That makes a 20. All right, what else do we have here? Uh, let's see. 9, 4, 5. That doesn't really make anything. So we'll just add up the rest of them. We don't have any other groups of 10 that we can make. So 9 plus 5 is 14, plus 4 more is 18. All right, so we've got 8, and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 to carry over, which is kind of nice because then 4 and 6 make 10. All right, so that makes 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, look at that. Two even groups of 10, so that's a there, and carry the 2. So we'll one make three. 308. Okay. So 308 is what happens there. It's the, like, the sum of the difference of the squares, or however you say that. 
Okay, so now we've got that number. And what do we do with that number? <laughs> We're not done yet. You actually divide it by uh, n minus 1. Um, and actually, hold on. Let me check, because all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I'm like second-guessing myself here. Uh, n or n minus 1, because there's sample standard deviation and then there's standard deviation. And now I'm like second-guessing myself here. So let me, deviation formula. I'm looking it up on my calculator here. Uh, it was n. Okay, I was thinking it was n, but okay. So population standard deviation. Uh, da -da 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 -da, x i minus u sum squared, take the sum, divide by n. Oh, divide by n and then take the square root. Okay, I was like, I know it's not just n. Okay, so <laughs> there's actually two more steps. So we divide by n. We divide by the number of things that there are. And again, for nice numbers, because uh, I really, hopefully, your teacher is letting you use a scientific calculator, but if not, then uh, I'll pray for you. <laughs> Let me know if I need to pray for you in the comments below, because your teacher is making you do all this by hand. By the way, if you're still here and you want to know how to do it with a calculator, I did say earlier that I was going to do that for number two, so you could scrub ahead, I won't be offended, and go to number two if you would like. Now, uh, to finish this out here, 308, uh does not divide evenly by 9. 307, well, 309 would divide evenly by 3, but it wouldn't divide evenly by 9 in that case. We'll just, we'll just divide it by 9 and just kind of see what happens. So 308, and we want to divide that by, and let's, let's do that here. So we'll make some space right here for that. And so 308 into 9 goes into 33 times, so 27, 38, and 9 times 4 is 36. And that's pretty close. 2 ninths is less than a half, so we'll, we'll just say 34. And then you have to take the square root of that number, which is a little shy of 6. So <laughs> we're doing a lot of estimating. We're, like, estimating a little bit a little bit uh, as we go along the way here. So the standard deviation comes out to roughly 6, but it's not exactly 6, obviously, because I rounded a bunch in between. So let, let's look at the answers. Let's see what they have. So standard deviation is, is roughly 6. The standard population standard deviation is, is roughly 6. Okay. But uh, according to this, it's a little bit shy of 6, but we did round a little bit throughout, so let's, let's see what they say. Let's see what they say, because you can look all these up, right? So look at that. We were pretty close, actually, 5.83. And, and when we were dividing just now, we actually got a little bit less than 6. The square root of 34 is a little bit less than 6. So actually, 5.83, we, we got pretty close to that just by uh, doing some rounding along the way and making our lives a little easier. And if you notice, all these other answers look good as well. So we can move on. All right. So now, here's how you do it with a calculator. All right. And let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit here. We'll switch to a green color. And I'll show you how to do it on the calculator. So again, I'm going to use a TI-30, sorry, a TI-84 plus. But if you have a different calculator, then you'll have different values. And that's totally fine. And if you want to know how to do it with a different calculator, you're welcome to throw a comment in the comment section below, and I'll take a look at what you've got. I uh, might have to look up the calculator if I don't have it, so I can look at where the buttons are at and stuff like that, and um, and then I can maybe uh, figure it out for you and troubleshoot. So just let me know in the comments, or you can shoot me an email, either way. But on ITI 84 Plus, you go to Stat, you press the Stat button, it's right underneath the Delete button, hit Enter. So now you're going to have L1, L2, L3 showing. Scroll up to L1. I if you have any values already in there, if everything's blank, then don't worry about it. But I'm going to clear out my L1, and then I'm going to go down. So, by the way, if you want to know how to clear out your L1, you have a bunch of values. You go up to L1, hover over L1, and hit clear. And that clears out L1. Don't hit delete, because that's really annoying, and it's really hard to get L1 back. Uh, it's not really hard if you know how to do it, but it's hard if you don't know how to do it. You're trying to figure it out. So... L1, it just means the, the first column, basically. So we put in all of our values. So 62, 
and hit record. 59. I'm pressing enter each time, by the way. I didn't mention that earlier. 70. 70. 71. 72. 73. 74. 75. And 77. Okay, so that's everything. So you hit second quit, and then you go back to the main screen from there. And then you go back into stat. Edit. Sorry, not stat edit. Just kidding. Go back. Strike that stat. And then once you press stat, go right arrow. And then hit enter. One variable stats is what it says. Hit enter again. And it'll give you all the things. Look at that. All right, so now you just have to be able to interpret it. So I'm going to help you interpret some of these values according to how it's written on a TI-84+. Plus. So the first thing they tell you is X bar. X bar is the mean. Okay. X bar is the mean, and we have 70.64. 70.64. That's if you round to two decimal places. All right. The next thing is uh, like a sum. It looks like that. Sum X. So that's the sum. We don't need that one, so it's not that important. The next is the sum of the x squareds. And that that's exactly what it what it is. It's just the, the sum of squares. The sum of squares. So all the x squareds summed up. Alright, then you have sx and a, a little symbol that you might not uh, recognize, and there's there's two different ones. So uh, I'm actually I'm kind of like double double guessing, uh, second guessing myself a lot today. But let me let me check to make sure I have the right one. So they have their standard is 4.27. Okay, and their their population standard. Okay, so come on, trying to scroll. Okay, so the first one SX. Capital S X. That's like a like it's it, it, it's a different one basically. So it's not population standard deviation. Um, I want to say it's sample standard, but it could just be like regular standard versus population standard. You'll have to not compare the two right now. I'm not sure, but the first one is is like a is like a standard deviation. So S X. We'll just we'll just call that one standard deviation. Standard deviation. The next one is is like a sigma. Is what it's called. It's a Greek letter. It's sigma. It's like the Greek equivalent of S. And that one is population standard deviation. So population standard deviation. And that's one of the things they want. So let's go ahead and give them that number. So that is 4.27. All right. Then n equals 11. That's just the number of terms in the data set. That one's really not even worth writing down. The next few are all the values that have to do with, like, if you want to make a box and whisker plot. So doing this on a calculator is especially helpful for box and whisker plots. So definitely keep that in mind when you have to make those. But you have the min, which is self-explanatory. They don't need that. You have the uh, max. At the end, so min, the max, you have min, quarter one, median, quarter three, and max. They don't need the min, but they do need the Q1, because Q1 is the lower quartile. Lower quartile. Right? And that's one of the things they're asking for, right? Uh, oh, by the way, let's go ahead and cross these off as we go. So we got the mean. Okay. Uh, we got the population standard deviation. That's right here. And now we're about to get the lower quartile. So the lower quartile is 69. All right, so we got that. And then it says the uh, median, MED for median. So that one's pretty self-explanatory. They just shortened the word. Median is 71. And then the upper quartile, Q3 is the upper quartile. Upper quartile. And the upper quartile is 74. Okay, so let's pause for a second, because you're like, oh, wait, hold on, Q1, Q3, where's Q2? The median is Q2, right? It's not normally called that, 
but the median is Q2. So Q0 would be like the minimum, it's like the start, so like 0 is the start. So Q0 is the minimum, if you want to think about it that way. Q1 is the lower quartile. That's a pretty commonly uh, accepted thing to call it, is Q1, or the first quartile. The second quartile is the median. Not as common to call it that, but it's acceptable. It's not really acceptable to call the, the minimum, the Q, Q0. I'm just kind of like, you know, putting them all in order here. Uh, Q3, upper quartile, that's a pretty common thing, just like Q1. And then Q4 would be the end, would be the max, right? And that's not, that's not a real, real technical way of saying it, but that's how you could maybe think about it. Okay? So we've got quite a few things just now. We got the lower quartile, the median, and the upper quartile. Right? And that's everything that the calculator gives us. So it did not give us the mode or the interquartile range, or the range for that matter, not that we need it. But uh, it's usually not too difficult to figure out the mode because it's just the one that it repeats the most often. So not that big of a deal, really. 62, 64, 60. 69, 70, 70, I guess that repeats. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 77. Okay, so the only thing that repeats is 70, and so that is the mode. There are, there's only one answer for pretty much everything besides the mode. The mode, you can have multiples. So like, let's say instead of a 75, it was a 77, then the mode would be 70 and 77. So th there'd be two answers for the mode. There'd be a tie for, for first place. Normally it doesn't happen, but it can. So the mode is 70. Okay. All right. So that, that's it for the mode. And then what about the interquartile range? Okay. So the range, you just subtract the biggest number and the littlest number. So the interquartile range, you just subtract the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So you would just do for the interquartile range, upper and lower, which we already talked about in number one, because, you know, we did all that by hand. So, the interquartile range is just going to be the, uh, let's see, 74 and 69. That's going to be five. Okay, so that's it. That took way less time to do with a calculator, so we will continue to use a calculator from here on out because of time reasons, um, and hopefully because your teacher's not insane. But if you were curious how to solve any of these by hand, you can always let me know in the comments below, or you can shoot me an email. Let's go ahead and move on to number three. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing, except this time I'm not going to explain it. I'm just going to type it in as we go, so we won't need to do a whole lot of extra work that way. So stat, edit, up to L1, clear, back down, and we just start typing in numbers. So 34, 39, 40. 43, 44, 47, 50, 50, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 58, 60, and 65. All right, so then you quit, go back to the main screen, stat, calculate one variable stats. That's really all there is to it. Um, I guess I could use another, I have several calculators, but um, this one is the one I'm the most familiar with, so that's probably the one I'm going to just use here. Uh, we'll just switch to a different shade of green, maybe. Or, uh, you know what, let's, let's use yellow, but then we'll increase the thickness a little bit. Just a little bit. So it's a little easier to see, because yellow doesn't contrast very well. Okay, so we want uh, all the things, right? And actually, uh, I have them all right here, right? We want mode, median, mean. So let's, let's just list it all out. So uh, let's say mode, median, median, mean, lower quartile, lower quartile, upper quartile, and the interquartile range, and the uh, population standard deviation. So that's if we list them all out in order. If we list them in order of the calculator, then we could do it that way as well. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. It doesn't really matter how you order them as long as you have all the answers, right? Okay, so I have the mean is 50. It's exactly 50. The next thing that's relative is the little sigma. Looks like a, like a little bird head, maybe. 
little sigma thing, uh, which is 8.10. Right, so that's the that's the standard deviation, population standard deviation, 8.10. And then we scroll down for the rest of the stuff. And you can just keep scrolling all the way to the end, really. Uh, Q1 is 43.5. 43.5. Q3 is 55.5, and the median is 51, and that's everything they give us, so the rest we have to figure out ourselves. I think I noticed a repeating value. I think it was 50. 50 is the repeating value. Right, I think that was the only one. Yeah, looks like that's the only one. So that's the only thing for the mode. And then for the interquartile range, we do the upper minus the lower. And that looks like that's going to be 12. And that's it. That's how you do it. All right, moving on to number four. So number four, and we'll go in order of the calculator this time, and I'll also switch to orange. And let's take that the thickness. Move it back down. Yellow is very, very light. Okay, so we're just going to do it again. Plug it into the calculator. Clear it out. Stat. Edit. Up to L1, cleared out, 2.9, enter, 4, enter, 4, enter, 4.5, enter, 5, enter, 5.125, 5, 5, 5. <laughs> 5, 5, 6, 6, 6, 6, make sure I got four of those, okay, 6.15, 6 6.25, 6.5, 5, 7, 7, 7. And make sure you hit enter on the very last one as well. Otherwise, it won't save it. It only saves it when you hit enter. All right, stat. Calculate. One variable stats. Let's do this. All right, so the first thing on the calculator, if you do in order of how the calculator gives you the answers, then we have x bar, a.k.a. the mean. All right, so the mean is 5.58. The next thing they want is the population standard deviation which is 1.14. Okie dokie, wait, hold on. Population standard deviation. Oh, right, right, that's not a measure of central tendency. I like double guess for a second there. Again, I don't know what it is with today. I'm like second guessing everything I do. Okay, so that was the standard deviation. And then the next stuff is uh, Q1, median, and Q3, Q1. So Q1 is 4.75, the median is 6, and Q3 is 6.375, or 6.38 if you're running to two decimal places. All right, that's everything that the calculator gives you. The rest is the interquartile range, which is Q3 minus Q1, and you can do that in the calculator. So you would just do uh, 6.38, if you're allowed to use a calculator, why not, right? 6.38 minus 4.75, and you get 1.68. And then you have, uh, what's the other thing? Oh, the mode. The mode got a little bit more interesting on this one. So there's several numbers that repeat, but if there are several different numbers that repeat, we don't list them all for the mode unless they all repeat the same number of times. I might have not made that super, super clear on number two or number one, but that is a thing. So even though there are several numbers that repeat, only one number repeats four times. That's six. So the mode is six. All right, that's it for that one. All right, number five, and a different way to look at data. I mean, the, the last way was, was a little bit different as well. Like they had it in like, a, like an Excel spreadsheet kind of thing for 3 and 4, as opposed to 1 and 2, listing them out. But it's kind of exactly the same thing, really. So now we get to a little bit different numbers. We can still do it all in the calculator, but let's go ahead and look at the two things that you have to do by hand anyways. Uh, well, the interquartile range we'll be able to get once we get the values typed into the calculator. So we'll actually save that to the end. The mode. The mode is a little different of how you think about it. Just a little bit. Because... If you look at the chart for number five, 
there's a lot of repeating values. There's one, one. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight twos. And that's the most repeating number. So really, it's, it's actually easier to figure out the mode because this is a nicer way to show you how the mode works. It's whichever one has the most dots, which is the two. So that's the mode. Now, in order to figure out anything else, we can still plug it into the calculator. You still do it exactly the same way. Stat, edit, go up to L1, clear it out, and we just start typing them in. So 1, enter. There are 8 twos. Oh, sorry, the mode is 2, not 8. <laughs> sorry about that. Alright, the mode is 2, because it repeats 8 times. So is the info. Okay, so then 2... Two, three twos, four twos, five twos, six twos, seven twos, eight twos. How many threes? Three threes. One, two, three threes. And three fours as well. One, two, three fours. Check out all that. Okay. So then we go stat. Calculate one variable stats. And have it type out all the answers for us. So then we have the mean. The mean is first, that's the x bar. The mean is 2.53. Then you'll have the population standard deviation, which is the sigma, the little bird looking thing, followed by the x, which is 0.88. So 0.88. Then you scroll all the way down to get the other stuff, which is going to be the lower quartile a.k.a. Q1, which is 2, the median, which is 2, and then the upper quartile, the upper quartile, a.k.a. Q3, which is 3, and then the only other thing we need is the interquartile range, interquartile range, which is the upper minus the lower, which is 1. All right, that wasn't that bad. Moving on to number six, kind of the same thing as before. Move to like a purplish color now. Keep switching colors here. So kind of the same thing. The mode is going to be kind of similar. Just look for the one that repeats. The frequency is how often it repeats. Two repeats the most, so two is the mode. All right. What about for the rest of the things? Well, you just type it all in again. So if we type it all in, stat, edit. Go up to L1, clear it out, type everything in. So we have six twos. One, two, three, four, five, six twos. Three threes. One, two, three threes. Four, uh, three fours. One, two, three fours. Two fives. Five, five. And two sixes. Six, six. Just had like a, uh, I just started to think about the Yahtzee for a second there, because it's like, oh, how many of this do you have? How many of that do you have? All right, so one variable stats, enter, and here we go. All right, so the X bar, the mean, is 3.44. 3.44. All right, next is the sample standard deviation, or the, sorry, the population standard deviation which is 1.41. All right. Then you scroll down to get the rest of the stuff, which is quarter one. Quarter one, a.k.a. lower quartile, which is two. The median, which is three. The upper quartile, a.k.a. quarter three, which is 4.5. And then the only thing we're missing is the interquartile range, which is Q3 minus Q1, which is 1.5. Where'd you keep it at? It's actually two and a half. I gave myself a lot. My quick math is not on point today. All right. Now we just have four more. We're almost done. All right. So number seven. Goals in a hockey game. The game and the goals. All right, so again, it's it's kind of like, you know, the, the, it's the frequency again. So there's a lot of things that have seven goals. So there's quite a few things. We're going to circle all the way back to blue. We made it all the way around back to blue. 
just in time, because that's a lot of blue. So, for the mode, we're going to have several modes, actually. So, mode. Well, the goals is the number of, you know, it's the number of goals in a game. So, uh, the goals is like the frequency, and then the games is, is like the actual number, right? So, in game one, how many goals? You got seven goals in game one. So, games uh, one, ten, eleven, twelve, and fifteen. All five of those games had seven goals, so those are all the modes. You can have several modes as long as they have the same frequency and the highest frequency compared to any other frequency. Whew. Okay, so that was the mode. Now let's get the rest of the stuff. I'll go ahead and put interquartile range here. We'll come back to that later. Well, let's go ahead and get all of our main stuff now. So the the X bar, we gotta type it all in. Ooh, this is gonna be annoying. Okay, so stat, edit, L1. Oh, clear it out. There we go. So how many ones do we have? Well, in game one, we had seven goals, right? So it's seven seven ones kind of, uh, and this is this is kind of a weird way to think about it. So let me let me check actually. I know I'm like second guessing myself a lot here, but let me see. So mode. Oh no, they're just saying the mode is seven. Okay, so they're interpreting this a little differently than how I was thinking they might. So they're saying the mode is seven, as in here's all the games games one through fifteen, and which one shows up the most often? Well, you know the this one does. So the the most often thing in general is is seven. Um, most often, oh, most often number of goals is seven. Is actually what they're saying. Not that it that it's the highest, but it's the most reoccurring number. Um, because there's only one one. There's one two three four threes. There's no fours. There's one, two, three, fives, and there's two sixes. Right? So that's why they're saying that that's the mode. But it, they're interpreting it a little differently than how I was thinking they were going to do that. That's, that's a little annoying. Right. And then they're, they're doing the rest of it. Um, uh, the, the way, so, so the way they're thinking about it is, is basically like considering the games uh, as like... So, so, so basically like the, the goals is, is like the number. The numbers that we're focusing on. If that makes sense. So if you wanted to list out the if you wanted to if you wanted to change this to a list basically for number seven, you would list everything out like like seven one three three five three, and you would go like that, and then you would figure everything out from there. Because if you look like the the median is five, the mean is five. If you kind of look like in the middle, yeah, like five is in the middle. It's like right here. So let let's do that actually because that was a little confusing the way they wrote that. So for this one, it's five. So let's so let's let's go back. So let's list out the values first, and then we'll talk about all those all those different things. So so for this one, if you listed it out instead, and you want to do it in order if you're going to list it out yourself. So one. Then we have one, two, three, four threes. So one, two, three, four threes. Blue does not cross out with blue very well. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, fives. Five, five, five. Five, five, five. We've got two sixes. And we've got one, two, three, four, five sevens. Uh, and I might need to move those numbers over. Can I move those over? I don't know if I can, actually. All right, so that was uh, one, two, three, four. So it's one. Which one? Is, you know what? Let me let me just move. I don't know if I can actually highlight it and move it like I can with other applications. But let's go ahead and just write it over here so I have space. So one, three, 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 five, five, five. Six, six. Uh, yeah, there's two sixes, and then five sevens. One, two, three, four, five. So then you would 
you know, just do all of the all the data based off of those numbers. Okay, so I'm not going to go ahead and do it in the calculator because I feel like at this point it's like okay, like you guys know what you're what you're doing there with the calculator. We can just move on to the next one. This stem and leaf plot, you got to be careful with stem and leaf plots. They're a little tricky sometimes. Sometimes it's helpful to list out some of the numbers. If we list out the numbers, it would look like this. It would be 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 8, 9. Okay? So that's the first row. The first row has uh, has no tens digit. Basically, it's a tens digit followed by ones digits. So this is a, a tens digit of 1 and a ones digit of 8, a.k.a. 18. So then you have 22, 24... 29 and 29. Okay. Then you have 32, 33, and 38. And then 48. So that's how you would list out the numbers if you want to list them all out. You don't have to, but that might be a, uh, another way you can make sense of stem and leaf plots. And then at that point, you should be able to type it all into the calculator to do what I showed you earlier. All right. So number 9 and number 10, last ones. We'll use yellow, we can just extend this a little bit. And let's go ahead and take a look at how they're interpreting these as well. They're probably interpreting them like this. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and write it out. So it's probably going to be 8, 8, 8, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we have four nines, 9, 9, 9, 9. Then we have an 8, then we have a 9, then we have a 9. Then we have an 11, then two 12s, and then a 13. Okay, and we'll we'll circle number nine so that we get we don't get nine and ten confused. So that's number nine. Uh, and if you wanted to list them in order, you could. It only dips down a little bit, so really you would just need to move this eight over over here and put it like right there, maybe. And then, voila, they are in order. If it wasn't like that, like for number 10, then you just have to rewrite them in order if you wanted to list them out in order. It's just to do it by hand. And then at that point, you can figure out all the things. Okay? And uh, let's, let's go ahead and look at what they say for this one, because uh, there's not a lot of variation. The standard deviation shouldn't be that high. The, uh, the mean, the median, and the mode are all going to be either like, eight nine ish the mean is the most affected by by like uh large or like very large numbers or very small numbers compared to the rest but um yeah although the mean median and mode should all be like between eight and ten roughly so let's see yeah okay so they're interpreting it how uh, how i thought they were for this one sometimes there's different ways to interpret how to how to quantify the answers. So, all right. For number ten, all right. All we're gonna do for number ten is exactly what we did for number nine, but I'm gonna relist them in order, right? So I'm just gonna keep going here. So I'm gonna go two, four, six, two, five. Kind of like in the middle there. Two, six, eight. Three, twelve, twelve, seventeen, twelve, 12, and 13. Okay, that one has a lot more dipping and stuff going on than number 9, so it might just be helpful to relist them from lowest to highest and go from there. So there are three twos, one, two, three. And you could either cross them off on the graph as you go, or you can cross them off on your list as you go. Either way, really. Right, so one, two, three. What's next? We have uh, a three. So there's a three. Get rid of that. And then we have a four. Get rid of that. We have a five. Right there here. We have two sixes, six, five, six, okay, 
we have an 8. We have a 10. We have several 12s, three 12s in total. One, two, three. That looks like that's going to be the mode. One, two, three 12s. One, two, three 12s. And then we have 13 and 17. All right, and that's how you might list them back out in order for that one. And that way, it's easy to do it by hand. Because if you're doing it in the calculator, you just type it all in. So that's not too bad. So that is it for this video. If it was helpful, you can always do a like and subscribe and whatnot. But if you want to see more free stuff, you can go check out more free stuff here on YouTube. Or you can go to my website where I'll have uh, lots of other content on there. Some of it is on YouTube, some of it is not. So go check that out. Uh, I'll be putting more and more like uh, notes kind of stuff on there too. Uh, as we go, I'll start trying to build that out a little more. So go check that out, especially if it is not uh, 2022 anymore, because at the time of this video, it's 2022 video. So go check that out, and uh, I'll see you in another episode real soon.